All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button on the video. And today, we're gonna walk you guys through some bowling adjustments where we go across four lanes where Bradley here doesn't know what's on each lane and we're gonna give you live adjustments that professionals make on how to throw strikes, get lined up, and shoot high scores on these lanes. Stay tuned. All right, Brad, so today we're gonna to talk bowling adjustments. And this is a question in our, in our coaching group. And when we walk in a bowling alley, anytime people are like, I don't know when to adjust. I either adjust too late, I adjust too soon. Um, so today we're gonna to walk through these four lanes and do adjustments uh, only with our, our body. So that's release, moving, ball speed changes. For the sake of this, we're gonna keep the bowling ball the same yep. on these four lanes and walk through adjustments. So, to kick this video off, do we just want to throw a shot on lane three here? Uh, sure, yeah. So Brad's going to throw a shot on lane three. He's thrown a few shots like you would in practice, but we're going to see what this lane's doing and then if we need to, how we need to adjust after that to get to the pocket. Yeah, key thing here is, and we get a question a lot like, hey, I'm bowling on bear pattern uh, tomorrow. How do I play it? Well, it's like, well. The, the characteristic of the lane, the house, the temperature in the air, uh, the bowling balls you got, the people you're bowling with, all those things matter on how you're supposed to play a lane. So it's like impossible to give, well, you're supposed to play it this way. So that's why there's no, we don't know the pattern, we don't know the graph, we're not looking at anything, we're just gonna try and adjust with our eyes, basically. So, beautiful. we're gonna... So I'd, if you, for the sake of this, if you didn't know where you were at, or what's on the lane, where, what's your first line of uh, shot? I want, the, I want the ball to somewhere get around second arrow. That's kind of what we were taught as like kids, uh, maybe like 15 to 10, uh, I guess 10 to 5, but like 15 to 10, meaning 15 board at the arrows, which is the third arrow, and then down lane, the 10 board, which is the second arrow. That is a very basic line of play to figure out how far the oil is and how much is on it, I guess. Okay, let's throw a shot. Let's see what we got out there. So we're just going to do a little 15 to 10. Let's see what we got. All right, and that was actually uh, one of the things we realized was there's quite a bit of oil on yeah. the lane. And just a couple of shots that uh, I threw previous to this video, immediately that makes me do a couple things. You're automatically thinking about a little bit of surface and, uh, you know, your goal is to get the ball into a roll and hook. So uh, stronger release, try and get the, the wrist a little bit lower on it. But. Yeah, so right there we saw that the ball didn't hook. We can't change balls, we're not doing that today. So what are gonna be your adjustments to do it? We talk ball speed, moving. Yeah, slower ball speed. So I'm not gonna move yet. I'm just gonna go slower ball speed and uh, stronger wrist. So not moving your case. So let's try it. So let's just, we're, it's like we're practicing here. We'll throw it this. Okay. And then we'll throw another shot. And Actually, see that's a good point because I would do this in practice. So I'm going to stay the same and I'm just going to slow up the ball speed. I do that by just following through less forcefully, just kind of letting the ball come off my hand a little softer um, and then just overall less effort. And then a stronger, lower, see how more responsive that was in the mid lane? Yeah. All, I, all I did was get a little lower and a little stronger under it. Uh, yeah, that's all I did. <laughs> yeah, you can see the ball got to the eight pin when we were shooting at that two eight ten right there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first shot didn't get to the eight. Right. So now that we kind of have an idea that we didn't really need to move our feet a whole lot on this lane per se, you just slowed it down. Let's see if we can get a strike. Okay. So like you say, he's not changing balls. He's not changing where he's standing, looking. We're only changing ball speed. Oh, I missed way all right so that's kind of easy to do when you want to slow up the ball speed you're kind of like letting go once you get to this position you're kind of just letting it come through and it's easy to just flail it so as we're like figuring out what's going on with the lane i'm also paying attention to what my misses are doing it's like oh that's a miss let's uh not do that one again so 
I'm doing, I'm doing both here. Yeah, so far, obviously the miss, when we get it right, we know there's a lot of oil on it, is gonna be like a 2 8 10 So when Brad's trying to line up here, he's not only focusing on how to strike, but he's also trying to get lined up in a place where he's gonna take that 2 8 10 out of play. Yeah, and I'm also recognizing, hey, I just missed right in 2 8 10 So something, you know, you always want a little bit of miss room, you know, depending on the pattern, but professionals are always looking for miss room. So I just noted, miss right, 2 8 10 Something ain't right, you know, something's yeah. got to change. Our alignment's not Because right. at least if I miss right, I don't want to split. I'd like to just two pin. So, so are you going to move your feet or anything here? and try? No, to I'm actually shot? just going to uh, execute that shot a little execute better. Execute the shot better. Okay. Um, and see which that is. That's way better. And I do that. I don't move because I just need to teach myself or tell myself what a good execution of a shot is. Yes. It's like I knew immediately once I threw that, like, that's not what I wanted. So the next shot, let's do what we wanted and then figure out uh, if we need to move or not. Yeah, I think a good point to make here is that uh, when people are talking about adjustments, a lot of people get uh, stuck in uh, trying, they bowl good at their league, right? And they, they know what it feels like to throw a good shot there. And then they go somewhere else. Well, that same feel of what that good shot is not going to translate necessarily to the next place you bowl at because the lane's different, all these variables are different. So you're making a really good point here that you have to feel what a good shot feels like on this lane, on this pattern today, and then start dialing that in. Yeah, and granted, you know, we've been doing this all our lives, so it's pretty easy for us to feel like what a good shot is. Uh, for a more beginner bowler, that's hard, you know, when they go, when they see something different, or they see a different house or a different condition, they don't know what a good shot is supposed to feel like if their normal shot is splitting. And that's where doing this kind of thing, uh, trial and erring, making sure you're getting in and practicing and making these moves, make, getting in uncomfortable positions, learning how to hook it, you know. Yeah. Teaching yourself how to adjust by trial and error is a, is a good part to it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So do we want to throw one more and see if I can't Yeah, let's strike? get lined up to the whole year. So information we've gained is a lot of oil miss right we're 2810 and we need we know we need the ball to slow down so these are kind of the thoughts that are going through our head when we're trying to get lined up okay and i missed right on that one but when the goal is to throw it slower to get it to hook more the reason that's the goal is because, so you can miss a little bit right. And actually, <laughs> that was almost slow enough to where it, I almost struck. It almost yeah, got, it almost got back. It almost got there. back. Yeah. So that's a positive thing. Yes, I threw a terrible shot in terms of my angle, but I got all the other variables good enough to where it almost came back and struck. All right, Brad, we're going to throw one more shot here. We've gone light every single time. Um, the last one we 2 8 instead of 2 8 10 but we're still coming up light. Mm -hmm. What is in your head now to where we need to get lined up and get to the pocket? Well, now we've thrown four shots, and all of them have been either light or a miss right or, you know, whatever. So now I'm thinking, well, I'm over four, you know, to keep doing that exact method. Even though it almost got there, the last shot, uh, it's still 0 for 4 and it didn't get there. So now I'm actually thinking about creeping my feet right um, because now I'm seeing that there's actually quite a bit of oil and I think I can play a little bit more direct line instead of playing, trying to throw it so slow that allows me to play a hook. I think I can move right and throw a more normal shot. So we're going to move our feet and maybe our eyes a little bit, but basically squaring we're, up more. Yeah. Now are you still trying to keep the slower, a slow, slower ball speed? I'm going to throw it exactly the same. So ball speed same, hand position same. Now we're just moving our feet. Now we're just, and it's only going to be like two or three boards. Okay, Let's see if it works. So a little more direct line. Beautiful. And uh, that's, I mean, yeah, flat tend and all that stuff, but uh, it, it, it got to the hole. So goal number one accomplished. Yeah, we got to the hole. After that, now we can figure out carrying. But the most important thing is now we have a lot of information of what's going on on the lane. So now we're going to go to lane four Excellent. here on the same pair. Brad is not throwing a shot on this. And we're going to see if there's any differences on the lane and what adjustments he's going to have to make to throw a strike. All right, so lane four here, same pair, have not thrown a shot. 
Brad, is your first attempt here going to be exactly where you're at on lane three, where you hit the hole? Yeah, I'm, I'm using all the information I just got on lane three, and I'm going to line up exactly how I ended on that on lane four. Okay, let's so, rock. Yep. Let's see if it works. Okay, so uh, that was a miss right, and uh, still a little bit more direct line. Uh, it was a miss right, and it almost got there, almost didn't, but I think I, I threw it too fast. I threw it faster than I did over there, for sure. Right. So, uh, if I would have thrown it the same speed as I did on lane three, I think that would have uh, got to the hole. So that was a speed issue. Um, but yeah, I'm going to play that same line. There's really no reason to try anything different. I'm still going light. At this point, we're really thinking about surface. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's just a part of the game. You know, a, a little bit of scratch, an Avalon pad, something to apply in practice. You can't do it in the middle of games and tournaments or anything. But uh, um, the, the service of the bowling ball plays a big role. So at this point, we would be thinking about surface. Yeah, you've shown every shot's been light. Even the shot that got to the pocket was light. It left a really flat 10, almost a 7-10. So that tells us that our ball isn't slowing down enough and it's not getting us that angle into the pocket that we're looking for. Um, so we two pin again here. And to me, yeah, I agree with you. That shot looked fast. Looked like it wasn't executed to no, your best. It wasn't. So to me, I think the fact that you just two pin there, you're heavy, you have a better idea now that we didn't split. So I think if a well executed shot right there, in my mind, if I was you, I'm like, okay, I'm really close. I two pinned. If I just throw it better yeah. right there and really focus on the things, dialing it in, I think you're going to strike. And now, you know, I've went six in a row of not getting it to hook, you know, at that point, it, it would almost feel good to get it to hook too much. So I'm, I'm eventually going to get this ball to hook really early just to prove that I can do it. That was quite a bit slower and it still has plenty of push. And that, that, that's a good sign. If we, th if we throw it slow and then all of a sudden it's like jumping offline, well, <laughs> we probably got a really tough pattern on our hands. If you throw it slow and it still glides down there nicely, well, that's a, that's a good feeling. Yeah, that shows that you have shim, you have hold, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever term yeah, that you want to use there. So now what I'm thinking is you have this next shot to lined up. Your focus is probably in your head. You're thinking, okay, I got my angle. I'm keeping it more in front of me. And, I'm, and now you have that tempo dialed in. Are those the two thoughts that are really going through your head right now? Yeah, strong release. The reason my ball speed was fast on the strike shot was because I just did not get a little lower body position. I did not get my wrist under it as much which results in a little bit of a miss. And especially with quite a bit of oil, uh, the ball is just gonna hydroplane. You know, the, the miss speed wise was small. It was more so just like a, you know, a fan yeah. creating and just like a hydroplane. So yeah, just lower, stronger, and it doesn't seem like I need to, uh, it, it, it seems like I can throw the ball pretty slow. Yeah, So I'm gonna Absolutely. keep doing it. So I got under that one more. And you know, that's an interesting point. The difference between a two pin and that strike is not a whole lot. No, no, that was, bas <laughs> that was basically a two pin. Basically the exact same thing. The difference was I executed the shot a little bit differently, or better. You know, I stayed down in it a little bit longer, I got under it. And when, you know, a lot of this carry issue, when you're leaving 50, 10 pins in a nine, that's, not, that's the difference. You know, like you can create carry, by executing the shot well. The fact that I did create a carry allows me to know that I did something right. Like when you're creating carry like that, uh, the ball motion's right and you're executing it right. So that's a good sign. Yeah, absolutely. And again, reminder, we have no idea what's on this lane. We have no idea what the pattern is. So these are all fresh shots. Yeah. Now this is our mindset to go through and try to figure out where to play. And notice how Brad's not getting frustrated on like two way tenning or splitting or anything like that because those are the wrong things you can't change that result once it happened we're now taking that information we go oh it's tight i need to adjust and play like this notice how even some of the shots some of them weren't the best executed but even the shots that weren't the best executed you gathered information to make an adjustment because yeah. you can still tell off a bad shot now if it's completely errant that's one thing but if you miss a couple boards to the right and you know we'll, we'll consider that technically like a bad shot that you miss but it's not like we missed so astronomically that we can't gain any information and even on a lot of bad shots you can gain information on the lane so that's all we're doing right here so let's throw one more on this lane we're pretty close we know we're keeping our angles in front of us 
slow ball speed, and you're, you're getting closer to dialing it. And in. at this point, I just want the ball to go high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. So that's significantly slower. Beautiful. Yeah. And so I can drop it down levels of speed, and the ball still floats down there. So that's the strategy, is slower ball speed. I mean, that immediately, well, we've thrown 10 shots. Uh, there's nothing fast ball speed about this pattern. There's nothing strong ball. That's just a, a Wolverine uh, midline symmetric ball. You know, nothing really crazy is needed. And we did not go the surface route route. All we did was drop the ball speed and angles lined up correctly. And that got us pretty good ball. Yeah, now you have your angle, you have your tempo, your thought on how you need to execute the shot. Now it's just going to be staying on top of that adjustment and moving your feet. So the next pair we're going to, five and six, we also have not bowled on yet. Let's, now that we're lined up, we have a good idea on four. We're going to pretend like we're jumping pairs. We have no idea what this is going to be. And we're going to see how fast we can get dialed in. Yeah. All right, so new pair here, lane five. Again, we have no idea. Uh, we actually, there's actually a college team that comes and practices in the morning here and yeah. lays out all these patterns. So we think it might be the same pattern. We watched Dennis throw a ball two-handed on it, and he claims there's more hook. That's all the <laughs> We have so Dennis's two-handed <laughs> game is all the information. Shots to line us up here. So <laughs> just for the sake of keeping everything the same. Uh, I assume your strategy is gonna stay the exact same when you're yeah. flipping pairs here. Yeah. So do you wanna get, let's get that shot out of the yeah. way and then let's see how, if the lanes are different at all. So we're still focusing on the slower ball speed. No need to throw it differently. Okay, so that, hopefully you can catch it by that camera. That was a miss with the hand. That was a miss right. The ball speed was slow enough that it caught, but immediately there's more hook. Yeah, absolutely. That like, shot right there was not coming back on three and four. So good job, Dennis. We're training him to be our ball, our, our, our scouting pair guy on the, on the tour so he can go ahead of us. And uh, hey, hey, you need to make a little four and two right there. Yep. <laughs> now on the tour, who starts on the pair for the 10, 15 minutes matters so much, but the fact that this lane is broken down more than this lane, that tells us how that lane could transition. Like, that explains the transition. Oh, there's friction that builds right there. Okay, that's how this, you know, some pairs, if you bowl more games on them, like if I was to miss it there, I would take three off the right. Or if someone threw urethane a bunch in practice, you know, they would get much slicker down lane. Um, we know that whatever was bowled on, uh, they're actually breaking down and creating more hook. So as we move and as the pattern progresses, we know what's going to happen, or at least it helps us have a guess. Yeah, so we experienced more hook on that one. Um, wasn't the best executed shot, but your ball speed was good. And I think that's what's important. When you're moving lanes, it's good to get a, a it's good to have an idea of what the what the main goal of how you need to throw the ball on that pattern and that bowling alley on that day because if you get that dialed in, you know, for your own game, whatever that case may be, when you go to make adjustments and go from lane to lane, you're gonna be a lot closer. For instance, if it's a pattern where you need to keep slow ball speed like this, you're gonna be a lot closer lane to lane. If it's a pattern where we gotta stay really up the back of it no matter where we're at. Well, if you have that adjustment dialed in and it's really working for you, then you're gonna be a lot closer. You know, if you see all the guys that are completely getting around it, are crushing it, but you're getting right up the back, you can probably be like, I need to get rotation. Like that's the overall idea of what this pattern's calling for. Or there's just little things like that we gotta dial in. And there's a lot of different patterns too. This one is allowing for slow ball speed. Um, I would show, I'm good at that. I show a lot more struggle when it requires high ball speed, which is what a lot of uh, house shots and like older bowling alleys, wood lanes. There's just a lot of hook in those lanes. So that would be, uh, you know, I kind of forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> there's a lot of hot. Uh, so that would be. You wanna just. Uh... Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Um, so on high friction patterns, you know, you can't throw slow ball speed, so you just, you wouldn't focus on it. You would have to make sure that your ball speed is higher. That is a variable that matters the most. Just like some patterns, slow ball speed matters. Some patterns, asymmetric balls matter. Some balls symmetric, or some pat, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. as long as you've got certain aspects, you can have misses. And on this pattern specifically, as long as you have ball, slow ball speed, um, it's gonna let you throw different balls and have misses.
Yeah, so let's throw one more shot. Our first shot, we gathered that we think this pair is hooking more. It could have been a fake out, so let's just try to dial in a good shot. So that should hook a lot, yeah. Yeah. Now, that's honestly a good thing. Like, I have yet to get a ball to hook that much. I made sure I got under that one, I was low, I got it to read early, and, uh, and it overhooked. So, that, you know, definitely tells me there's more hook. It also tells me I can move now. Yes, so. now, now is gonna be my point. That shot looked a lot more executed than the other ones. Your wrist was stronger. It probably would have struck on lane four. Yeah, I think that shims down there. Yeah. So now this is telling us, and that's why it's important to, if you, if you miss, like we're like, oh, this pair hooks more. You got to the pocket on a bad shot, but you have to understand, okay, if I throw a good shot where I'm trying to make it, Am I gonna strike? Right, so what, what just happened in those two shots is the bad shot struck and the better shot went way too high. So which one do you wanna lean on? You know, you wanna go with the aggressive executed shot. So now I would actually throw the shot that missed next and just adjust to it because it allows me to be aggressive. I don't wanna have, the only way for me to strike is to miss it, you know, you don't wanna yeah. do that. No. So we three, six, 10 here, let's throw another shot. And now Brad's gonna move his feet Keep everything else the same because now we know this pair is hooking more. All right, so I'm just gonna move a dot, five boards. It's gonna allow Ooh, me to big stay aggressive. Five. Nosebleed. And now I can actually get aggressive. And before, when there was a lot of push down the lane, it's hard to get aggressive because that can make the ball just slide all the way down. Yeah. Now, um, now that there's friction, now you can get after it because you know it's gonna slow down. Yeah, so we're two frames into this lane. We had a lucky strike, then we had one hook on us to three, six, 10. Now in this third frame on this lane, we should be dialed in. He yeah. moved five, it's still hooked too much. I would expect you to move a couple we more here and be aggressive. Be, we should be dialed in, all right. So yep, I wanna move another two. So that's a total of seven that I would not move on lane four. Gonna hook. Beautiful. Don't, people at home, do not be afraid to make adjustments. We can see off a strike, this is a, and those three shots will, um, are I think a really good example how people don't process information the, in the most efficient way. The first shot strikes, the second shot you think you threw better, but it missed. A lot of people will look at that second shot and be like, man, I didn't throw that good. I missed left or I did this. No, 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 no. You threw that one good, your just idea of what the lane is giving you isn't necessarily correct. You need to move off that shot that missed and don't focus on that one that struck. Let's move off that one. And again, don't be afraid to make adjustments. Brad just moved seven boards. And, with, and got more aggressive. And, and, and we know he's a pro, we know he's, you're accustomed but to this. But the reason I'm accustomed to it is because I failed at it hundreds of thousands of times it feels like. Yeah, how All many times I've, have you only moved one board or two boards? Do you know how many times I've bowled good on a Saturday and tanked on a Sunday because the pattern plays tighter? Yeah. All no you gotta do is me. throw slower and I'm but hitting dude, harder and harder and I'm two tinning and two tinning. And all you gotta do is let up. And um, so yeah, uh, the learning how to do transition is trial and error. Uh, watching these videos from our trial and error and then also going in and trial and erroring yourself. You can't be afraid to split because you moved. Well, that split just told you what you needed. In Absolutely, so we had the tight pair over here. We moved pairs, five. We can clearly tell that we moved seven boards here. We kept the overall idea of how we're throwing the ball the same. Now we used our moving adjustment. So we've went through ball speed to adjust. We've went through where to move. Now let's hop over to lane six and see if it's playing anywhere near lane five. All right, lane six here. We've gathered that lane five hooked more than three and four, so we know this pair, when you're going into lane six here, based off the lane five information, that this pair seems like it's uh, faster in the transition phase, meaning there's more wear on it, there's more hook. So I assume you're gonna keep the same idea as lane five here. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna throw it exactly how I did on lane five, but I'm remembering how we needed to throw it on lane three and four as well. So if for some reason, this lane just plays a lot tighter than lane five, well then we know how to we know what adjustment to make from there because we came off tight lanes off three and four. So the only anything new adjusting we would see is more friction, uh, which would probably be pretty rare. So uh, yeah, I'm throwing exactly like lane five. I'm confident it should be a strike. Let's go. Let's do it. 
Show them how professional you are, Brad. Oh, that's so far left. <laughs> da 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 da! Touching! We found the shim! Oh, man. So, it's important. Bad shots like that are gonna happen. When, but, when we can get him to strike, that means the feet are in the right place, the eyes are in the right place, we have an overall idea. We found that shim. Obviously, we might not want to throw it there every time, yeah. but we know it's there. So that means we've gotten a lot closer to where our feet, eyes, whole idea of how we're trying to throw the ball, that is a lot closer to what we need for this pattern. And if this was a tournament, you know, we'd start on the first pair, it was just slicker. Uh, we did not hit the surface, which in normal tournament we would have, or we would have tried another ball. But uh, this happens a lot, you know, the first pair is slick and the next pair hooks a lot, or the first pair hooks a lot and the next pair is slick. In terms of being of like a really good bowler, that's a lot of what it is out on tour. Everybody can make shots. They know the bowling balls. You know, how well can you manage the transition is probably the most important thing at the highest of levels of bowling. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, just stay there. All right. All right, so let's throw, let's throw one more here. Let's throw right. it where exactly we want it to or around. All right, so now we're going to try and actually execute the shot, right? Yep. We'll see if we got the same friction as we do on five. That's closer. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, not 100% executed. It was a little right and down lane, but it still got there. Yeah, we know it's hooking. And it almost struck. Three and four, shot may get there, may light crumble, might two, might 210. So three and four, tighter. We're assuming this is the same pattern, but either way, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because when you go to a different lane, even though it's the same pattern, <laughs> the, based on like Brad mentioned earlier, how it was broken down, if you have a guy throwing urethane up 10 and you have a guy throwing a charcoal resin ball from 15 to out, I promise you that those two pairs are gonna play so different that they're not gonna even feel like the same yeah. pattern. And you know, St. Charles lanes, we've thousands of shots thrown in this. Lane eight is four tighter than lane seven. I mean, well, historically, they just got new lanes. They just got new lanes. So, so I don't know, actually. Not. I, I think that stays in there. there. But like, you just lanes are different. It's just, that's the way it is. The characteristic of the house plays such a significant role that being able to adjust gives you a big advantage over your opponents, whether it's in league or in tournaments. All right, everyone. So the main takeaway is that we want you to go from this video when we talk about adjustments is, for one, Keep an open mind. Realize that lanes are not going to play the same. For two, sometimes we don't need to depend so much on the ball, and especially in practice here, work on moving your feet, moving your eyes, realizing what the lane is giving you there. We saw that three and four, it was tighter. We needed to make sure our angles were in front of us and keeping that ball slower. We got over to five and six. We realized there was more friction off the bat. Brad was not afraid to move seven boards left and make a big adjustment to get lined in. Then you saw him throwing it all over the place and they were all getting to the yeah, hole. Yeah. So we got, we got lined up. So don't be afraid to make adjustments. Practice these moves with your ball speed, your feet, your hand positions. And it will, I promise you it will increase your game. And we have a big giveaway going on in the month of November. We are giving away two packages, a Brad and a Kyle, a bowling ball, a signed jersey, and a free one month subscription to our Brad and Kyle membership. So make sure you hit that link below and get signed up. We'll be drawing the winners at the end of the month. Good luck, and we'll see you guys later.